today's readings are about sources of power and authority. As ancient as they are, these readings still pose questions to us. What are the sources of authority and power and value in our world? Who gets to say? Who in our world is valued and who is devalued and why? When we take a little time to think about it, I think most of us know the answers to those questions. In our society, like many others, the people who are treated as if they are the most important and valuable tend to be those with the most. The most money, of course, no matter where it comes from, but also the most strength, the most education, the most perceived ability, the most influence, the most fame or attention, no matter how they get that, too, and so on. Meanwhile, the people who are least valued and least powerful in our society tend to be those who are poor, those without degrees, those who are seen as weak or disabled, those who don't fit in, who look different from the societal norms for beauty, who aren't aggressive or attention-seeking. To what extent have we bought into those standards? As people of faith, we know we are called to live in a different way, to value our lives and the lives of others by a different standard, but do we? And what is that different standard? In today's reading from Deuteronomy, both the people and the prophet are cautioned against turning to idolatry of any kind, whether that idol worship is religious, cultural, or simply the tendency to put our own desires before the needs of others. In the Gospels, when Jesus heals someone or even forgives someone on the Sabbath, when he welcomes or heals people who are considered unclean, when he teaches that God's mercy is more important than religious rituals and rules, he challenges the social and religious status quo of his time and really of every time. Yet, over and over again, we fall into the same patterns and stumble over the same terrain as those who went before us. Just like that ancient church at Corinth, we mistake things for the thing. We mistake pleasure for happiness and happiness for joy. We mistake rules and rituals for faith and place a higher value on our own individual freedom or growth or perspective over the needs of our neighbors around us. Often we're so focused on proving our own worth, doing our job, earning our degree, making that money, making our point in a conversation. Mansplaining is one, is one version of that. I <laughs> or even volunteering for some good cause that we aren't even fully aware of the people who are around us. We miss their stories, their hopes and needs, their heartfelt dreams. We miss out on their gifts. It becomes all about me and all about meeting some internal need or demand for approval that I have within myself. In that ancient church in Corinth, for example, some people insisted on practicing the right rituals, while others insisted they had the deeper understanding. Everyone got hung up on their own truth, their own beliefs, their own self-affirmation. No one bothered to consider what their neighbors might need or might have to teach them let alone where God is in all of this. Look, wrote Paul, everyone knows that idols are meaningless, so who cares whether they eat the food dedicated to idols or not? That's not the point of faith. Food is just food. On the other hand, he continued, anyone who claims to know more than others does not yet have the knowledge they really need. Who cares? if you have more complex theological insight than your neighbor. So either way, you're missing the point. Then Paul says something that is at the heart of his understanding of that different way we are called to live, to value our lives and to treat others, the way of love. Knowledge puffs up, he said, but love builds up. And anyone who loves God is known by God. Later in the New Testament, it goes one step further saying, anyone who loves Anyone who loves is known by God and filled with God, for God is love. So later in the letter to the church at Corinth, Paul emphasizes this point in his famous passage on love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels but do not have love, I'm just a noisy gong. If I have prophetic powers 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, even if I have all faith. So as to remove mountains, but to not have love. I'm nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and even if I hand over my body so that I may boast of my generous, sacrificial spirit, but do not have love, I gain nothing. 